Today I want to introduce you to a guest artist, Margie Guyet, and you will be amazed at what she does. Let's get started. This is Margie standing outside her home. She's always doing something creative at her home, some sort of project or some kind of improvement, something that really makes her home signaturely her home. I, I love these bottles on the branches. I mean, isn't that fantastic? I don't, I, so she is one of those people that's creating art all the time, not just when she's in front of the canvas. I think she sees the whole world as a place where her creativity can blossom. And I really admire that. There aren't that many people, artists that I know that live that way. And she definitely does. This is Margie in front of some of her paintings. You can see that they're quite complex and she sets up still lifes with a lot of thought and a lot of detail, but there's a freedom to them and a lightness to them. She's very aware of the light. And you can see that when we look at her plain air paintings, she's in a, can draw with incredible skill. Uh, there's almost nothing she can't do, quite frankly. I just find her uh, someone I admire just so very much. The first time that I became aware of her was when she was out uh, on one of the lakes in Michigan and she was painting outdoors and she was painting the ice blocks. I wish I had bought one of those paintings. A lesson to all of us is if you see an artist who's painting something that you love and they're doing a series, buy it then because it's not going to appear again. Margie is the one on the right, and I just cannot imagine how cold it was painting. I, it just blows my mind. I would, would never have the concentration to be able to do that. But she is a painter. I think she lives, eats, and breathes it. So now what I want to do is I want to look at a more surreal painting by Margie. And the reason I wanted to talk about Margie today was I, I did give uh, Stefano from uh, the Landscape Painter of the Year 2003 series a really hard time because of his surrealist paintings. And I wanted to show that surrealist paintings can be done really, really well. This is a good example of it. This is the many faces of Margie. I mean, look at this. I mean, and, and she also came to mind because in uh, the final piece, from uh, Landscape Painter of the Year 2023, Stefano put in a dinosaur for no reason. It was down in some rubble, you could hardly see it. And I thought, wait a minute, I remember a painting where someone threw in a dinosaur and it was great. So here it is, she's got dinosaurs, she's got spaceships, she's got a crazy chicken on her head. I mean, this is fun stuff. And for me, that's kind of what surrealist painting should be. There, there's an alien over on the far right. I mean, if you're an artist, you can create your own world and your own thoughts. And I think that's very much what she's doing. She is, um, she is conveying not just good painting, but her thoughts, how she views the world. And I have to say also with a great deal of humor. Not every piece that she does is humorous. The next one coming up is a political piece. We all know this fella and what he's done to the world. And this is her interpretation of who he really is. And I, I think she nailed it. She's absolutely right. So she's not going to write a long post that is political, but this is what art can do. Art can be political without, with, with just one image. And she does it so perfectly here. So uh, her, she has certainly has strong beliefs that, that I align with as well. Now, the next painting coming up is kind of more what you'll see when you go to um, her website, margiegayot.art, and there's, I'll, I'll put that up at, at the end of this video, which are, are these kinds of tablescapes that she sets up. She has an incredible amount of weird stuff, and she, she says it's weird stuff. She looks for weird stuff and then puts it all together in ways that are kind of lyrical in a way. I mean, none of this stuff should go together at all. This is, this is not Cezanne. This is not pears and peaches. This is, you could argue this is just stuff, but it all works. It all works because she's got such a great sense of composition and, and color and also a sense of light. You know, you can tell that there is a source of light that's lighting all of this tablescape. 
She's not afraid to deal with detail. I mean, there's a lot of detail when it comes to the sombrero and the beads and the, the crochet and all of that. But it doesn't get bogged down in detail. You don't get a sense that this is a photorealist. Someone, you, you know, that you could substitute this for a photo, for example, which would just be, she's got the chops to do it, but I also think she has the wisdom to know that uh, painting can take you further than a photograph can. And this certainly does. And, and there's always a surprise. See the cat under the table? I mean, that's hilarious. How is that not hilarious? It's hilarious and delightful. Now the next one coming up is really surreal and might test your boundaries a little bit. And by that I mean it is, it's a dream. I mean this, this next painting is, is a dream. So, all right, so here we go. It's, it's obviously Margie in a chair knitting or crocheting and the crochet turns into the Newfoundland dog and then that turns into you know these other critters cr creatures and critters that are all around but I have never ever seen this kind of imagery where someone has crossed the boundary from what we know to be true you cannot knit a dog and yet make it true and the other thing that this painting does for me is it reminds me always that we're all interconnected. We're as connected to the chair as we are to the chipmunks, as we are to the raccoons, as we are to the dog, as we are to the deer that are running away in the back. And I think she's very connected to nature. You can tell that if you follow her on Facebook and just see what she's doing around her home. She, she certainly doesn't call people to come in and help her do her uh, different projects. She just digs in and does them. This is a more what I would consider, um, I was going to say normal, but that's, that sounds really bad. Um, this is more of the kind of tablescape that you will often see in an art gallery, and she's perfectly capable of doing this. So there's nothing surreal going on here, but what is going on here is once again her very unusual eye for what props to use. I don't know many people that have a fish vase like that. I know lots of people that have the, the kind of glass that's, that's here and the kind of tablecloth and whatnot, but she just has this uh, uncanny ability to put weird, unusual stuff together. The next one really pushes color, and I mean pushes color to an extent that is almost um, well beyond my imagination. But my point about picking this one is it works. And I don't know any other painter who could have made this work. It's just too intense. So here it is. I mean, that is a lot of color for your eye to take in. It's also really smart. I mean, she's using complementary colors. Look at the blue against the orange and the green against the red. Margie definitely knows her color theory. But she's also not afraid to mix pattern with really complex subjects. And once again, it, it works. And if you blur your eyes, it becomes this incredible abstract painting as well. So it can be, she can be many things, which is the versatility is, is really rather extraordinary. The next one coming up is a little bit more of a standard. That's a better word than I was using before, standard landscape. But one of the textures that's really hard to paint, I know, is that mother of pearl, which is what's happening inside uh, that shell. So hard to convey that kind of texture and shine, but she has that ability. Now we're going to look at some of her, what I would call, what these are more, these are plain air landscapes coming up. And typically on Facebook, when she posts her landscapes, she'll put her landscape right next to, right on the easel, right next to what she just painted. And it is so accurate. It's, it's rather amazing. The next one coming up is um, also just, you, can, you get a sense of her energy, you get a sense of the brush strokes, and her plain air work clearly informs those tablescapes. You can see it. She's so aware of the light and, her, and so aware of the color differences and the, the value changes that happen. So that kind of studied eye, when you bring it back into the studio, just creates incredible work. 
I do believe she works in oil. I'm not sure, either oil or acrylic. I love this one, this, this because I especially love this time of year, that weird time. I said weird again. Sorry, Margie, if you're watching this, I used weird too many times. But this is that in-between time between March and when summer com uh, spring is coming. And it's, it's, it's just a moment. It just captures such a moment. Here is another sort of more standard tablescape that I was alluding to when I was talking about the apples. Um, but it's, it's so carefully considered and so carefully drawn. And I just love her style. I love everything about what she does. I mean, what else is there to say? I mean, this is so fantastic. And look, there's another cat underneath looking up. I just love, I just, I aspire to paint this well. You know, maybe someday I'll be able to. I, I sure hope so. Meanwhile, let's look at some more simple subjects that she's done. But, she, but there's, not to under, uh, these are just as fantastic. I just wanted to show you the, the range. That's really what I'm talking about. We started out at her home where her home is really an artistic creation that she does, and then her own uh, political statements that she makes through some work onto surrealism, combining all kinds of weird, st uh, uh, strange objects together, and then um, also to the plain air work, and then finally to this more uh, considered work, which I would just guess is more saleable. So remember to keep the white to your paper white, your paints wet. Please look at Margie online. You can see her, on, you can find her on Facebook. I don't know where she is on Instagram, but she must be. And, um, and support her art. Thanks for being a good sport about this, Margie. And remember to keep the white to your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.